Good evening and welcome to the Cardinal Scoreboard Show. This is Trey Graham along with Cardinals head football coach Matt Nally. We are here on the fourth floor of the press box at Coach Kenny Deal Stadium. We've told you we're taking the show on the road every week. We've been all over the campus, and we were in the main part of the fourth floor, which is right over there earlier. This is one of the side rooms or a suite, if you will. It's a pretty nice place to yes, sir. hang out and watch some football games. If I'm not working up there, sometimes I'm sitting down here, and it's a great place to sit. Coach Deal has an office here nearby. And uh, this is part of the fourth floor and wanted to see you, wanted to let you see some of the places here on our campus. Of course, it's time to look back to a tough loss against Frisco Emerson. The final score was 38 to 35. Tough loss for the Cardinals, a district loss on the road at the Star. Of course, you know I've got some stats for you, but yeah. first your thoughts over a tough loss. Yeah, I mean, you know, first off, I was so proud of the kids um, and so proud of the coaches um, just as, as that week that they, they prepped. Um, I was so proud of the kids and the fight um, that they had throughout the, the entire game. Um, you know, it, Frisco is a really good team. You know, a lot of people forget that entire team last year, besides the quarterback who was the backup, you know, they went to the fifth round, you know, and took Sock. Um, uh, to the wire. So, I mean, that was a really good football team um, going into that game. So, we knew that they were going to be a dangerous team. Um, and their backs were against the wall, you know, kind of like our backs are against the wall this week. So, um, they were a dangerous football team. They were very, very, very talented. Um, you know, they got kids everywhere, going everywhere. And um, uh, they're very well coached. And um, so, I mean, we, we knew that we were going to have our hands full going into it. And the thing is, is, is football is such a weird thing right now. If, if you look at high school scores uh, from last week, if you look at, you know, college and the NFL and, you know, football is just kind of taking this totally different face than what we're used to. Um, so, you know, for me, it's, it's a good thing. You know, I always like, you know, I mean, if it, let's let's make it a challenge and um, let's learn and grow from things because that is what essentially athletics is. is an opportunity for people to grow from adversity or grow from something that doesn't work out the way that they want them to work out. Or like I told the kids, you know, I mean, if it's a win or a loss, there's an opportunity in there to learn something that's going to benefit you for the rest of your life. Um, so... But going back to it, kudos to Emerson. They made plays when they had to make plays, and um, those kids fought really, really hard. And um, it was a really, really good football uh, game and a really good um, atmosphere to play in. Um, and like I said, I just I love our kids, and um, I love the fight that they gave throughout that entire game. You've said it many times you're coaching 16, 17, 18-year-olds. Yep. Yes. One week ago we sat right over there. And said you won the game seventy-five to six. Correct. And we were talking about school records and all of those things. Now we sit here on the wrong side of a thirty-eight to thirty-five score. Right. Was there any sense of we took them lightly because we won so big? Was it they were too high? You got to get the team. Does that emotional or the roller coaster thing, is that reality or people just think that? I think that's just people's perception. Um, our kids knew going into the game that they were good. Um, and you can't look at scores. And that it's so um, out of date and out of touch these days to look at scores, you know, and, and whatnot. And besides that, we, we had some – some kids that were dealing with, with illness, which, um, you know, which had some operational issues that we had on punt. We had our, our deep snapper, um, that, um, was sick that day. And, um, our short snapper, who's our backup deep snapper did it. He's an unbelievable kid, did a great job, but we had some operational issues going into it. Um, but, um, to answer your question, absolutely not. You know, there's no connection between last week and this week. No, no. The the kids, um, you know, they prepped the same. They did the same thing. And this is the thing. P people think that, um, you know, the kids are you know different one week or than they're not. They're they're locked in every week. Um, you know, the coaches are, you know, the Independence Week. The coaches were up here on Saturday morning at eight, and they left at three. They were back up here at one, and they left at. You know, who knows when, and then the Emerson week, you know, they were 
doing the same thing on Saturday, and then Sunday they were back up here at 1 and left at probably 8, 9, 10 o'clock that night. Um, last night, same thing, you know, and then we practiced this morning. And, um, you know, I mean, the kids are locked in, the coaches are locked in, and um, it's just a really great time to, to be a football fan. Um, but, no, there was no difference in – I, I did not notice anything, and we talked about it. You know, you talk about that Lovejoy score in Emerson. Um, you know, in you know Emerson, what they did um, all year is is they're in a position to win the game. Like people don't realize they're in that position to win the Anna game, and they're up, and they turn the ball over. It's a defensive turnover. They scoop and score, and it and it then starts to separate themselves. Um, and then in the Lovejoy game, it's the same thing. You know, they go down and they have a big stop, and they're moving the football, and they fumble it, and Lovejoy scoops and scores, and it starts to separate. And uh, Friday night, that did not happen. You know, they they kind of caught all the breaks. Um, but that's how football works, you know, and not just that, but that's how life works. And um, those kids have got to learn, um, and us coaches too, we've got to learn that, you know, when life doesn't work out the way that we want it to work out, that uh, we're going to have to take a step back and reflect and um, learn from, from all of our mistakes and or learn from the breaks that didn't come our way. Um, but, um, but, no, I don't think it had anything to do with, with the week prior. A few stats for you. Nine penalties for 85 yards, two turnovers. One thing that I think was significant, your offense averaged only 3.3 yards per carry. Mm -hmm. So you're playing second and long or third and long a lot. Yeah, you know, the, going into it, we had kind of, um, just because their defense is so exotic and you don't really know who's going to be that fifth guy and um, whatnot, and, you know, not a lot of people – pitch and toe and, and do those things and their Mike Backer is amazing I mean he's first team all state for a reason um off of that fifth round team I mean he was unbelievable but we kind of knew going into the game that we were going to have to do some things differently in our run game um to get it to get it going but also we knew we were going to have to throw the football um and, and take advantage of that. So, and we did a lot of stuff within our pre-snap and our, our RPO game to help us out. But, you know, there's a reason why Tyler Montgomery's the the player of the week. You know, he had an unbelievable game, but, you know, he was also targeted a lot. And Noah did a great job of finding him, um, you know, because they were bringing a lot of pressure, you know, a lot of exotic pressures and doing some different stuff. And they were playing mostly man behind it. Um, which, you know, Noah recognized and took advantage of. Um, and that's, like I said, that's why Tyler had such a good game. But knowing that and, you know, I mean, the uh, we, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. So, like, you know, I'm going to go and ask coaches around, you know, what would you do, you know, who've played them and, and things like that. And I got some advice from some coaches that had just recently played them. And um, they gave us the same advice that, you know, we're kind of already on that track, but they gave us some really good advice. And, um, but Emerson's a good football team, you know, and uh, Friday night they deserve to win. We're going to get to meet Tyler Montgomery and Max Corbin, our players of the game, in just a moment. I do want to say thanks to Burl's Used Cars, mm -hmm. again, for being the sponsor That's of today's awesome. broadcast. Our good friend Burl Woolard, Highway 5, go down there, and especially if you're a parent of a teenager, mm -hmm. go see Burl's Used Cars. I want to take a break for a second. I want to show you something and show the audience something, yeah. and then I want to get you to react yeah, to it. Absolutely. Of Melissa. First and ten, Mavericks. Tight end is in a wing back to the right side. Shelton's in the shotgun. He's going to fake the handoff, fake a pump fake. He's got a wide open wafer, and he's going to make a catch at the ten-yard line, and he'll be taken down first and goal at the two. They run pump fake instead of quarterback run, and they throw the go route, and it's first and goal. Now the clock is a serious thing. If you're Coach Miller, you want to use as much time as you can. 2.55 and counting. Coach Nally. Now, this is serious stuff, Coach. Is this one of those where you let them score? Maybe. I think it's always – you, you always think about you never that. Think about, you never want to say it out loud. No, you don't because you can always force a fumble. You can, you can you know, 
find a gap in there and bust that quarterback, bust the running back, and get the ball on the ground. First and goal from the two. Shelton, the quarterback, is going to run it, and they are not letting him score. He will be taken down as a loss back to the four-yard line. But that's something that you never so say out loud, but everybody who knows football knows. So this is going to take it, you know, under two minutes here. Yes, sir. That's one of the things that teams think about in this moment is if they're going to score, you want them to score sooner to give you some time to do something. But you never like it to think you're just going to give up on a play. But it's real-world football, and we are now under two minutes. It's going to be second and goal from the four. They come to the line of scrimmage with seven on the play clock. Shelton in the shotgun. He's going to hand the ball off going left and not able to turn the corner. And finally does and goes out of bounds that's to a, stop the clock. That's a big thing. Right? That yes, clock sir. is running. They ran three seconds off the clock. 137 is where they finally stop it after he goes out of bounds at the three-yard line. So it's third and goal from the three. Now, again, field goal does nothing for the Mavericks, down by four points. So third and goal from the three, stop the clock there. Ball's on the left hash. And Nally, of course, is not playing the let them score game. Trips right. Shelton in the shotgun. That, that out of bounds play was a major stop of the clock. Shelton's going to run the football, and he's going to have a touchdown. So, remember we were talking about it at the three-minute mark. That play that actually didn't take five seconds, ran five seconds off the clock. So it's 132 now. And they'll set up for the kick to make it three-point advantage on their side. Again, that's what the chart says you would do. So Pacheco on for the kick. It is up, and it is an important one for the Mavericks to give them back the three-point advantage. 92 seconds on the clock. One timeout for your Cardinals. And you need three to tie and six to win. Welcome back to the Cardinal Scoreboard Show. You just saw as an audience, and Coach Nally just saw, a conversation that Kenny Deal and I had on the broadcast. And this was, you were ahead mm -hmm. with three minutes to go in the game. Emerson was driving. And the question I asked Kenny on the air with three minutes to go, and they had first and goal, should you let them score? And as I said on the broadcast, nobody likes that idea. Mm -hmm. It's 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 quit. It's lay down. Nobody likes it. But it becomes a clock management reality. So you're a lot smarter football guy than I am. So if it crossed my mind, did it cross yours? We had a discussion about it. Um, right when they got down there, um, we started to discuss it. Um, and then first down happened. And after first down, I was like, no, guys, I have total confidence in the defense. Um, it's not going to be a field goal. You know, they have to score a touchdown. Because um, they were down by four. Correct. And um, our defense gets harder to score on as it gets condensed more. Um, so, no, I, we, we did discuss it. Um, there was a discussion um, about it. Um, but I Do said, you care to tell a little more about how that works, or is that no, private I mean, conversation? No, no, it was fine. It was, it, so it was me, Coach Pickup, and Coach Hemsley. We got together, and we discussed, okay, what, what – and it literally the play had just happened. Because as we showed on the video, they throw a long ball yes. down there. It becomes first and goal. Correct. And that's when it hit me, so I brought it up on the air. It had to come to you at the same right, moment. Right. Three minutes to go. If they run the time all out, you're done. Right, right. If they score sooner, as I said on the broadcast, you have more time. Correct. They had been bobbling the snap all game. Um, they had fumbled it a couple of times, and, it, you know, the fumble popped back up to them. Um, but also they had done that all year. So um, I was just like, no, we're, I'm going to put the faith in the kids. Um, and, and to answer your question, we got together – and had this conversation, and I said, let's see what happens after first down. So after first down, we got to stop, and I was like, no. And this this is what entered my brain was all those things that had happened based off of film and based off what happened in the game. I mean, the kid, you know, was catching snaps over here and bobbling snaps around, um, 
And I was like, no, guys, we're going to put the faith in the kids, and uh, we're going to get a stop. You know, this is what's going to happen. Um, and then, you know, I mean, we had a minute and a half left. I still had a timeout. Um, After they scored a minute and a correct. half. Correct. Right. And I had a timeout. So I felt really good. Um, you know, our offense was playing really well at that time. So I felt really good about uh, the opportunity to go and put us in a situation to at least tie. Right. And, um, but we did have that discussion. Um, but like like you said, I mean, there, there's a time for that. That was the next question. Is there ever a – then that's a good idea. I, I think so. Um, to me, in that situation, no. I, I just felt so good about uh, where we were um, defensively, and our defense gets so hard to score on um, inside the 20s. So I was like, man, guys, I'm putting, the, I'm putting all my chips in with these kids. Um and, um, you know, sometimes you, sometimes you win them, sometimes you lose them. But at the end of the day, I'm going to go um, down with those kiddos. So, um, but as a football person, I do believe there's times for that. Um, but in that situation at that time, I no. Because, I mean, the way I felt was we were going to get a stop. And then, okay, I was like, if we don't get a stop, I'm going to have plenty of time with a timeout to go score. So, um but yeah, I hope, hopefully that answers your it question. It does. It does. So the follow-on question then is: when you practice your special situations, mm-hmm. which every coach and every team does, what do you do in this situation? Like the you need to take a safety to win the game or whatever. All those special situations. Is this one the let them score? Is that a special situation that you practice? I'm going to be honest with you. You know. Um, this is how you practice it. You know, you just say, let them score. You know, there's not a lot to it. There's you know? not There's not an a explanation of the theory to oh, your players? Well, you do that prior to the practice session. Right. But practicing it is very simple. Oh, well, yeah. true. <laughs> you know, Stand it's there and very move. simple. Right. But the discussion piece happens. Because it's so illogical Correct. to everybody's mind. Correct. Unless you really know football. Correct. Um but, yeah, I mean, you have a discussion because at the end of the day, you know, you're still dealing with kids. And, you know, kids can get, um, you know, offended or the feelings are like, you know, you don't have faith in me or right. what are you doing or whatever the case may be. Coach um, lost his mind. Yeah, you know, so you, you have those discussions, but it's it's earlier rather than, you know, at the moment. Um, but um, But it was discussed. It was discussed. But, you know, you know, it's my team and I'm going to make the, the final decision. And I was like, no, boys, we're – I believe in those kiddos, and this is what we're going to do. And um, so, yeah. Well, it, glad we got to talk about yeah, it because yeah, it was interesting yeah. Yeah, in yeah. the moment when yeah. we, Kenny Absolutely. and I were talking Absolutely. about it. We're going to talk about the game coming up with Prosper, Prosper Walnut Grove after we meet our players of the week because it's in reality a playoff game yeah, for you. Yeah. But first, we're going to meet our players of the game, and these are returning awardees, including Max Corbin, who yep. was here one week ago. Yep. Senior uh, linebacker number four, Max Corbin. He blocked a punt, and then we talked about Tyler Montgomery, number twelve, the receiver. He's been awarded the the player of the game this season already. So talk about Max and Tyler. You know, and they've already been on the show, so it's it's so fun. But um, I mean, I can talk about Max and Tyler all the time. Max is. I mean, I wish he was my son. You know, he is such an unbelievable person. Um, His parents have done a great job of raising him. Um, What a great kid. Um, But, man, he's so selfless, you know, in a a selfish world, um, in an entitled world. That is not who he is. Um, He is totally about others and serving others. Um, He is just a wonderful human being. Um, and then he's a great player as well, but, and then you have Tyler who is, um, he's got a great personality. I've known Tyler for a long time. Um, great personality. Um, but once again, like he's just been raised right. You know, he's such a sweet golden hearted person. Um, he's going to make a great husband and father one day. Um, a great citizen. Um, you know, he's, he's one of those guys that, uh, you know, when something goes on or whatever the case may be, you know, um, he's going to call and check on me and stuff like that. So, I mean, I have a um, a big heart for Tyler Montgomery. But those two are extremely great picks um, for the player of the game. But they are unbelievable people. 
Well, you're going to get to meet them in just a moment. You're also going to get to see some of their highlights as we introduce you to our players of the game from the tough loss to Frisco Emerson. We do want to invite you and your family to join us at First Melissa on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. or 10.15 a.m. You and your family will find a church home if you come and visit with us. Go to firstmelissa.com to find out more. We'll take a break and introduce you to our players of the game right after this. Welcome back to the Cardinal Scoreboard Show. This is Trey Graham introducing you to our players of the game from the tough loss against Frisco Emerson. First of all, you get to meet wide receiver number 12, Tyler Montgomery. Congratulations. Thank you. You've been here before. Yes, sir. Seven receptions, 171 yards, two touchdowns. Yes, sir, not Excellent bad, no. game. Very good job. The question was, did you know going into the game that you were going to be the main target? Uh, I mean, we've definitely been doing stuff and practice scheme and stuff, but I mean, just taking my fundamentals, just going through what I'm supposed to do. I was just open, getting open, doing what I'm supposed to do, and fell into play, you know. There were a couple of occasions where you were running dig routes or crossing routes, and you were right at the sticks. Yes, sir. So talk about you have to know where the first down yes, line sir. is, right? Definitely as a receiver, you got to just know situational awareness, you know. So if it's third and ten, you're not going to run your at third, like eight yards. You're going to run 13, 14, get a little two extra yards. So, yes, sir. Does the quarterback or the coach tell you that, or do you just need to know that? It's kind of just the thing that comes with the game, you know. Yeah. It's just kind of – it's a given. Good, good. It was a tough loss. Yes, sir, definitely. Took it uh, – He's got to take it as like a learning point, you know. I mean, we just missed out on some fundamentals, some small details. Started a little slow in the first half, but uh, I think we learned a lot from that game, and we know what we need to fix coming this next week. Did they do anything you didn't expect? Uh, there's some some stuff, but not really. I mean, we really – I think we prepared good. We just – we just those small details we need to execute. Can't miss on the small things. What have the coaches done? As I talked with Coach Nally about, you have – a big, huge lead and a big, huge win the week before and then a really tough game to follow. How do you stay off the roller coaster? Uh, I mean, for me personally, I know coming off one like that, going against a team like Independence, it's not really much like a – it doesn't really mean much to us, and we know that because we versed teams last year and coming off that, we know that it's just got to keep level-headed. We got to know where we're at. And I just know going to the next game of Walnut Grove, we all know our worth. We know what we can do. And I feel like – even though we had that loss against Emerson, we know what we can do, and I feel like we're going to fix those things and we're going to be on top of our game. Well, congratulations for being the player of the game. Thank you, yes, sir. Wide receiver Tyler Montgomery, our offensive player of the game. We'll take a break, show you a few of his highlights, and then you'll get to meet our defensive player of the game right after this. As has the freshman running back, Bear Tabor. He's got five touchdowns on the ground, averaging six and a half yards per carry. Here's third and long. They're going to throw a crossing route, caught – by Tyler Montgomery, and he's going to fall forward for a first down. Good job by Tyler. I don't think he had the first down on the catch, but was able to take a big pop, but to get his body going forward. Very tough run. Only picked up a yard after the catch, but that's what he needed to pick up the first down. Needed 13, got 14. Cardinals down by a deuce. Twins to both sides on third and 12. Shoe back, straight drop back, has time, throws the slant route. It's going to be caught right beyond the sticks. Good job there. Tyler Montgomery's been the go-to guy. That's good route. Good route set down right there at the, the line to gain. Cradled that ball in and hit the ground. Well, we'll get to some more emails in a moment. MCNR at melissaisd.org. Noah Schubach throws the slant route. It's caught by Tyler Montgomery. He couldn't keep his feet or he'd have been gone. That was a touchdown. He'll take it out to the first down at the 31, but he was tripped up there. He was almost on a track meet. The Yankees just took a lead on a home run by Stanton. Throw the post route caught by Tyler Montgomery. He's wide open. 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Cardinals. Touchdown, Tyler Montgomery, 70-yard touchdown from Schubeck to Montgomery, and Cardinals are back in the game. Maybe that will be the spark right down the middle of the field down that seam. Hit Tyler in stride, did Noah Schubeck, and he was off to the races. No one was going to catch him. Second and nine. 
Fake the handoff, steps in the pocket, throws a go route down the seam. It's going to be caught by Tyler Montgomery. First down, Cardinals, nice throw, nice catch. Montgomery seems to always find a way to get open. Whether it's a crossing route or just a deep, deep go route. Ran the nine route down the hash. Pickup of 38. Two receivers left. Montgomery and Poole. They throw it to Montgomery, who makes the catch at the one-yard line, falls in, touchdown, Cardinals. Great job there, picking up the blitz. Again, ball thrown a little bit short on, I think, in, in, on purpose. Does a great job coming back for the ball, does Tyler Montgomery. Welcome back to the Cardinal Scoreboard Show. We're introducing you to our players of the game from the loss against the Frisco Emerson Mavericks. You met wide receiver Tyler Montgomery a moment ago. Now you get to meet number four, linebacker Max Corbin, who has accomplished a rare feat. You get to be our player of the game two weeks in a row. Yes, sir. So congratulations. Yes, sir. Thank you. So I know it was a huge honor. It was a life change for you to be here last week, right? Was it your goal to come back this week? Well, I mean, I'm always trying. I'm always striving. Just really, I'm not focusing on myself. Just trying to help the team out. So doing my doing my job there, I really open it up. So it makes me look good. Good. Well, good. You you had a great game. Yes, so thank you. And one of the things I want to ask you about: their quarterback was big, Shelton. Yeah, he's very big. And six three, two ten. He had four touchdowns on the ground. Yeah. I'm sure he was your key going in. Yes, sir. Talk about the game plan. Um, we know they got really good skill players, and we knew we had to really try to shut them down as much as possible. So our main job was really just reading them and trying to figure out what we could do and stop them to as least yards as possible. I mean, just really going at it. We knew their quarterback was big. We knew their running backs are all strong. Their receivers are fast. But we know we can attack their. We knew we could attack their line and try our best to stuff them behind the line, put, really put pressure on them and shut them down before the game. But sometimes it doesn't work out, and we, we tried our best, just little small things we got to fix. Anything surprise you? Um, really, they just ran the same plays a lot. And, I mean, you don't expect it too much, but – they keep running the same plays. We gotta, we gotta make an adjustment. So, talk about the process of that. I mean, we're on the sideline. We're trying to figure things out, and obviously, coaches have relays coming down. So, we're, all, we're always trying to figure it out and figure out where we can go better to fit where we need to be and stop them on that run. And I mean, do you have an example better. of an adjustment? Um, if they they've run quarterback power over and over again, mm -hmm. right? The coaches see that. What do they say to you? And what what's the adjustment? So usually I will come off the line and I'll hit one of the linemen. So that wasn't working for us. So instead I came off and I kind of settled just so I could try to force him inside to our inside backers. Okay. And how long does it take? Is it – you don't do that after the first play. Oh, no, sir. When is that occurring? Um, it's usually after it hits us a few times. Like the first drive? Yeah. First drive, if they hit it a few times, we'll go off the bench. We'll talk to our coach. He'll draw it up on the whiteboard and we'll, we'll get it all figured out. Okay, what is the mood of the team? We had a, as I mentioned already on the program, you had a really big win and then a tough loss. Yes, sir. What's the uh, the feel right now? Honestly, I, I it feels really motivated at practice. I know we're we're working really hard. They're really fast paced. So I mean, we're out there grinding. We're out there exhausting ourselves. We're we're really getting into it. I mean, I'm really excited to, see how, to play this game. You're new to linebacker. Yes, sir. We talked about that last week. Is there a linebacker out there in the NFL or in college football that you want to pattern yourself after? Ooh, I mean, someone I've kind of looked up to is Caleb Otlutsky. He was here a <laughs> okay. while ago, and he was here when I first moved here, so he okay. kind of he kind of showed me Former the way Cardinal, a little bit. Former college football player. Yeah, he right. kind of showed me the way a little bit. Okay. So, I mean, that really inspired me to see him and see where he's gone now. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody on in the NFL? Ooh, in the NFL – not an outside linebacker, but people like Cam Chancellor. Okay. I'm a Seahawks fan, so I've always kind of looked up to him. I really loved how the way he played the game and the way he honored everybody he played with. Good, good. What is your hope that the Cardinal fans will be doing this Friday? Ooh, I mean, we got to win, so I'm, I'm really hoping we're loud. I'm hoping we're out there, and I'm, I'm, I really hope we're pumped up. I mean, it's really exciting to play when everybody's out there, crowd's cheering, everybody's loud, band's loud. I mean, there's nothing better than that. Well, congratulations. Yes, sir. Thank you. Our defensive player of the game – Linebacker Max Corbin will take a break, show you some of his highlights, and then we'll bring Coach Matt Nally back right after this. 
Emerson had a good drive against our defense on the last position. Just ended with a miss field goal. First and 10. Shelton's going to throw it to the right side and it's going to be tipped and knocked away. Incomplete. Second down. Just over three minutes to go in this second quarter. You get to stick around at halftime and enjoy the performances by the various bands. I believe Max was the one. Corbin got his paw on that ball. Last week's player of the game. He had an interception return for a touchdown against Independence. Shelton's going to fake the handoff from quarterback keep. Until there he is again. Max Corbin pulls him down for a five-yard gain. Rare punt here from the Mavericks. They've spent most of this entire game in the Cardinal side of the field. Snap is back. The punt is blocked, and the Cardinals are going to be able to fall on it, and they're going to have a short field. Oh, I thought that was going to be a touchdown. Coming up with the loose football for the Cardinals is Brody McDowell, and the Cardinals get the punt blocked and the special teams play. First down, Melissa at the Emerson 20-yard line. Special teams have been a big factor tonight. Let's see, number four. That's your Corbin. old boy, Corbin. Yes, in on that block. Welcome back to the Cardinal Scoreboard Show. This is Trey Graham along with Matt Nally. You got to meet our players of the game, Tyler Montgomery and Max Corbin. Got to see a few of their highlights. And now we come to the fashion segment of the program. All right, yeah, dang right. Which you and I are both experts yeah. at. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're going to show some photos here on the video, some cool new helmets. Yeah, yeah, heck yeah, heck yeah. Um, so we, we fundraised last um spring and that's what the kids wanted they wanted a red helmet and um it's actually not a, an actual helmet it's it's called a game day skin and um it actually fits over the helmet um i actually ordered them so we could have them for homecoming um and they didn't come in they were stuck in customs so i'm um, talking to the kids the kids were like coach we want to wear them um and so they wanted to go all white with that, which I thought it looked amazing. I thought it looked cool. Um, but uh, it they came in about 9 o'clock Friday morning. And myself, Coach Hemsley, and um, a, a few players, Logan D'Amore helped, uh, Jacob Washerman helped, um, and the coaching staff. And it took us until 2 o'clock to get all those on. So it was, and a guy from the company came and helped us out as well. So I'm so, the, the best part about that whole thing is when the kids walked in. When the kids walked in and they saw them, oh man, it was, it, it warmed my heart. It was the best part of my day um, just because they were happy and it was so golly, man. It's, I don't want to get emotional thinking about it, but it was awesome. It was awesome just, you know, getting to see them um, and have that moment with them. So, but yeah. That was, that was a pretty cool moment. It was. It looked really sharp when he came out. The game this Friday here at Coach Kenny Deal Stadium right there, 7.30 p.m. kickoff, playing Prosper Walnut Grove for mm -hmm. the first time ever. Mm -hmm. Brand new school, only their second year of football. Right. They're having a great season. Mm -hmm. They defeated Lovejoy this past Friday. Correct. And they're in the lead in the district right. in a brand new school. Right. And this is a regular season game, but in reality, this is a playoff correct, game. Correct. So give us the preview. You know, their 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 coach um, is Tommy Allison, and I've known Tommy for a long, long time. Um, Tommy was one of those guys when um, he was an up and comer, and I was just a young punk kid. Um, he took a lot of time and mentored me, and and showed me some stuff that. Um, um, it's on the offensive side of things that, um, you know, we, I ran for a long time. You know, there's a lot of things that, uh, um, that Tommy taught me that, um, helped me throughout my career, um, and whatnot. Um, and, and where was he at the time? He was at Cayuga is a little small school in, uh, East Texas. Um, and, um, 
So, and then Tommy's bounced around a little bit. He went to Jacksboro, then he went to uh, Waco Robinson, and then Waco Midway, and then now he's at Prosper Walnut Grove. And um, I'm watching him and the, the way his offense has evolved. Um, it was kind, It's kind of like the offense that um, I used to call when I was the OC here, except Tommy has put it on steroids so they play extremely fast it's all about finding grass and it's all about you know using the 12th man as tempo um, and I say tempo fast um, you know they're snapping the ball very very quickly um, and they make their offense very very simple so there's a lot of um, good things to that. There's a lot of pros to that, but there's a lot of uh, cons to that as well, like three and outs and not taking any time off the clock and things like that. But also the big pro is you can tire out a defense really, really quick. They're not lining up right, and you can take advantage of it. Um, and that's what Tommy does a really, really good job of is, is finding that open grass. So, But – he has done an amazing job there, um, and obviously it's translated to, to wins. So, um, you know, Tommy is, is – I'll be honest with you, Tommy's one of my really, really good friends, and um, he does an unbelievable job, and he, you know, he did a great job every place he's been. So um, it will be fun to play Tommy on Friday night. And they happen to be seven and one overall, yeah, and yeah. five and one in the district. Yeah, yep. In first place yep. in the district. Yep. And again, it's not a playoff game, but it's a playoff oh, it's game. It's a playoff game. Yeah. So talk about the implications of that. You know, I mean, we we have our backs against the wall. You know, it's pretty simple. You know, you got to win to get in. And um, I, I've said this all year long. This is, I mean, they call it the district of doom for a reason. You know, um, and it doesn't matter if you're one, two, three, four. You're going to be ready for the playoffs. You know, all these other districts are doing their things or whatever the case may be. There is no other district like this district. Um, and uh, so, I mean, I say that, you know, um, you know, Anna beat Walnut Grove um, and um, – just the, 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 the oh, I've got them all right yeah, here, Coach. It, it, yep, it, it's yep. It's wild, yep. you know. Anna beats. Go ahead. Well, uh, Anna defeats Prosper Walnut Grove. Anna lost to Melissa. Anna lost to Lovejoy. Lovejoy loses to Pl Pro right, Pro right. Walnut Grove. Emerson beats Melissa. Emerson loses to Anna. Yep. That's all the the bracketology stuff that we work on. Yes. And it's wild because normally at this time, everything's kind of settled down. Yeah. You know, yes. it's kind of put in this place and yes. it's just not that way. And the wild thing is, is it, that's going on all over the state of Texas. And it's usually not that way. Like it's just a wild, wild, crazy year uh, for football in general. Um, but, you know, I go back to it and, and I say it again, like we, we're going to have to fight out of a corner. You know, I told the kids last night or last week playing Emerson, I said, they're in a corner. And when you're in a corner, there's only one of two things you can do. You're going to either fall down in the fetal position and just die, or you're going to fight. So at the end of the day, it is our job to make them fall down in the fetal position and say, okay, cool, I'll take it. But when they start fighting, you got to fight too. And um, they started fighting, and our kids fought, and I'm so proud of them um, and whatnot. But, you know, we're in a corner. You know, there's only two things that we can do. And we're either going to fall in the fetal position or we're going to fight. Um, and I know our kids. Our kids will fight. Our coaches will fight. So um, I'm excited to see uh, um, us play Friday night. And I'm so proud of our kids and I love our kids dearly. And I'm so proud and I love the coaches so dearly too. So it's a, it's football and I, people might not believe this, but football should be this way. Athletics should be this way because when we talk about what is going to teach you about life, man, this is life. You know, life isn't easy. Life is hard. And how are you going to adjust to adversity when life, as you know, punches you in the face? You know, I mean, it, this is a great learning tool. Um, how are you going to react? It's not about how you respond. It's how you react. Um, and I said that wrong. It's not how you react. It's how you respond. And we're hoping that we have a positive response. Um but, you know, that's, you know, there's been, you know, as a coach, you know, dealing with these things, it's the same thing. You have sleepless nights, you have all these things. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably running on about six hours of sleep from Friday right now. Um, but, 
you still have to take this moment. It's a teachable moment and you, you grow from it and you learn from it because that's adversity helps you grow. Um, so at the end of the day, I think it's a great moment. Um, I, I heard this quote, um, there's, there's great opportunities that can turn into great moments. And this is a great opportunity for us to turn to a great moment. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, I, I love the kids. I love the coaches. And I love um, everything about uh, Melissa Cardinal football. So it's just an awesome opportunity. We do have two regular season games to go. This is the home regular season finale this Friday, 7.30 kickoff, 7 o'clock pregame show. Prosper Walnut Grove right here at Coach Kenny Beal Stadium. So I hope you'll be by the channel or be here in the stadium. We do thank Burl's Used Cars again for being our sponsor of today's broadcast. And before we sign off, any requests of the Cardinal fans as they file in on Friday night for a big uh, must-win game? Just be as loud as you can. Just be as loud as you can and support these young men. Um, yeah, that's it. Just be as loud and support them as much as you can. We do thank Tyler Montgomery and Max Corbin for being with us today. We thank our friends at Burl's Used Cars. We thank our friends at First Melissa. You're invited to worship on Sunday mornings, 9 a.m. or 10, 15 a.m. Visit the website or the mobile app. You can download the First Melissa app as well. This is Matt Nally. My name is Trey Graham. We will see you on Friday night. Big game. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching the Cardinal Scoreboard Show.